This game is great! Look at these four Vault Hunters! You know their story and how they overcame the Tyrant Jack, but this is not Borderlands 2. This is the pre-sequel, a game that starts off after the events of the second game, then flashbacks? Flashes backs? Goes... Goes back to between the first and second. The four Vault Hunters you can play as this time is Wilhelm, Athena, Nisha and Claptrap. The DLC characters include Jack the Doppelganger, a body double of Handsome Jack who implements the destructive copies to help him in battle, and Aurelia the Baroness, the trillionaire sister of Sir Hammerlock, who uses a homing frost diadem shard to freeze her enemies. This time you fight alongside Handsome Jack, seeing him go from a normal guy to the tyrant that the fans love to hate in Borderlands 2, and assisting with the rise of the Hyperion Corporation and its place within it. Borderlands the pre-sequel begins as Colonel Zarpodon and her Lost Legion assault and capture the Helios space station. Jack sends his new Vault Hunters to the surface of Elpis, Pandora's Moon, in an effort to find a way to retake the station. Throughout the game, you'll have the events told by a captured Athena, speaking to Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick. She said we're her best man. That makes me feel good. Ow. Sometimes they comment on the events happening during the story. The shoot and loot system you guys know and love from the Borderlands series continues here with a few new additions, such as low gravity combat, oxygen powered double jump, the cryo element for freezing enemies, and the new laser weapon class, as well as new vehicles to help explore the lunar landscape of the moon of Elpis. The story here fills in the blanks that the second one left us wondering about, such as why Jack hates the Vault Hunters. Roxy, what the hell are you doing? Betraying you, trying to kill you. Two things I should have done a long time ago, you power hungry psychopath. And how he got that mask if that's not his real face. Hey, a handsome. With all this said and done, let's talk about gameplay. This game is not kind. This game is a lot harder than the second one I found. Every time I got further, it's like I hit a roadblock of experience. I thought I could just do the story mode missions and be done with it. But you can't. The game puts up such a high difficulty wall in front of you that you have no choice but to do the side quest in order to progress, otherwise you'll die without mercy. And I mean what I say. From the second you can walk from being revived, you're already being shot at. If you're not expecting it, you die within seconds of being revived, which is already pretty terrible. If I'm running into a ledge and press the jump button, I should be able to jump over the ledge. Not this game, I've run into invisible roofs if I try that. The stupidest thing of all is the O2 mechanic, where you have to avoid being or you have to avoid being out on the moon for too long, otherwise you lose air and in turn start losing health. Logically, no, it isn't stupid and it does make sense, I just don't care for it. I swear the difficulty is turned up because as I shoot at enemies, it's like they see my bullets and have no issues dodging them whatsoever. They also constantly drop uh, down gravity things that pull me in unless I destroy it, and even shield domes so I can't shoot at them when I get to second wind. And when I do get to second wind, they all run away and I have no one near me to bring me back to life. There is co-op in this game as well, and up to four players can team up, uh, just like in the previous games, which would probably make things more easier. But I never had that option, as either my friends either didn't have it, or had it on Xbox One. I played it on PS4, so that wasn't... possible. Those are just the negatives. I'm pretty sure the majority of you have played Borderlands in some fashion, 
it is fun once you get past the difficulty, so level up before moving on and you'll be alright. There are pop culture references in this game that might fly by some people, but let me share a couple with you. In one mission, you put together a robot that is remarkably similar to Doctor Who's Daleks. I'm sure that's patchable. Hell with it. I'm destroying this thing. Another one I noticed was when I was fighting a tentacle monster in a garbage compactor named Meg. It even has the blonde hair and pink hat. It is a great nod to Family Guy in the Blue Harvest movie. Lastly, closer to the end of the game, I came across a secret room with pixelated blocks like Mario. Even the treasure chests are blocky style. Now, I didn't get any blocky uh, block faces like I did on the second one though, but it was still fun. The trophies are reasonably easy enough, it's just they're time consuming. For example, you have to get to a high enough level with each of the four main classes. And lastly, after beating the game, you get the mask of the last boss, and if you beat it on true Vault Hunter mode, which is a lot tougher as you can expect, you get the head itself. Bling bling! I liked it for the most part. I like games where there's a bit of seriousness to it, but have comedy in the game as well. Look! Another incoming message from those jerk bags. It reads, Booty Salads. I'm a grown woman who had to say, Booty Salads, because some jackass wrote those words. The Borderlands series delivers that special mix of shooting everything, but laughing, or at least chuckling, while doing it. The cell shading style of gameplay in the first person shooter RPG makes it a good game to play. It is better than the first one, I'd say, but the second one is still my favorite of the trilogy. Here's hoping we get a Borderlands 3 after that cryptic ending, know what I mean? Now is not the time for bickery, all touches. War is coming, and you will need all the vault hunters you can get. Well, that's my take on this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, guys, see ya! John, is that you? Call me Jack, honey. <sighs> Handsome Jack. <laughs>